Hello everybody and welcome back to the Gearhead 426 channel. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do a brake flush on any vehicle for under $15. Okay, so what I mean for under $15, I'm not actually joking. I have all the receipts, I already added them all up. Uh, this even included the brake fluid and it comes up to $14.38. All the things that you need to go ahead and get this done for under $15 is right here. Now, I've included the brake fluid in this. Which, see it is how I have a Volkswagen, a German vehicle, I need to use a DOT4. This stuff's kind of expensive. Uh, it's about $11, $11, well this is the cheap one. The expensive one was like $16 for a can of the same size. But I got this one, it's a synthetic brake fluid. It's alright. Most brake fluids are going to cost you anywhere between 7 all the way up to uh, $25 depending on what brake fluid you get and how much of it you get. Then I stopped by the local dollar store where I'm at, Dollar Tree, and picked myself up a turkey baster because this thing will save you a lot of freaking time. It saves you from a lot of mess and it's great for picking up the fluids out of the reservoir to go ahead and put the new stuff in. And if you see the vehicle that I have, the reservoir is all the way back here, which is a pain in the butt uh, to get to. I actually have to take the air and take out. The other thing is go and pick up some 5 sixteenths vital hosing and then drill a hole in it. I actually put two holes. I put one big hole to fit the hose in there and then I put a tiny little breather hole so that the hose doesn't get pushed out. Uh, get about two-ish, two to three feet of vinyl hosing, five sixteenths, and a wrench so that you can open up the bleeders. That's actually all you need. Uh, if you do have to take out the air intake like I did, which would be, you know, like let's just say Volkswagen's, it's usually a 10 millimeter bolt. One other thing that you need to do too is check the manual to see which brakes that you need to go ahead and bleed first. I looked into the service manual for my Volkswagen and Instead of the usual what you do is you start with the passenger rear and then you go driver rear, passenger front, driver front. This one is actually backwards and it's because of the type of ABS system it has on it. So the way that you bleed the brakes on my vehicle is completely backwards. You start with the driver front, then you go to passenger front, uh, driver rear, then passenger rear. Kind of sucks. Well, not really. It's just weird. It's strange. I've never done them this way. Now, why am I currently flushing out my brakes? A, it needs to be done every two years no matter how many miles that you have on it for my vehicle. B, I'm having some brake problems. Uh, I think I ran low on fluid and air got trapped into the lines. Uh, at times, my brake pedal feels perfectly fine. But I'm pretty sure that there's air in the lines because there's not enough air in it for me to feel it whenever the vehicle is cold. But whenever the vehicle warms up, I think there's just enough in there to allow the fluid to boil. And then, all of a sudden, my foot just goes straight to the floor and I have to pump my brakes. Uh, that could also mean that my master cylinder is going out. But we're going to go ahead and go with the cheap fix first and flush out all the brake fluids so that we know for a fact that that is not the problem. I did check for leaks and I can't find them anywhere, but whenever this happened, it took a lot of brake fluid and it, for the most part, fixed the problem as though it cooled the brake fluid down, but there's still air trapped in the lines. I was, it was in the middle of the night whenever this happened and it also happened last night, so I decided to go ahead and do it today. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so first thing that you want to go ahead and do is make sure that the e-brake is on. I have a manual transmission, so my e-brake is always on. One thing I don't have to worry about. Uh, the next thing is go ahead and jack up the vehicle. What I like to do on unibody vehicles like this, where there is no frame or chassis, uh, the body is the frame, and then there's a subframe that connects all the suspension. Uh, what I like to go ahead and do is put a block of wood on top of my jack so that I don't bend up anything underneath like the channels and whatnot while jacking up the vehicle. Uh, you should go ahead and put jack stands underneath the vehicle whenever you have it up in the air while you're working on it uh, for safety reasons of course but unfortunately I do not have any so we're not going to worry about that plus there's never going to be more than one wheel in the air at a time while I'm doing this so I'm not too worried.
Now you can go ahead and take the wheel off. All right, so now that I have the vehicle jacked up and the car in the air, we can go ahead and pull the little cap off of the bleeder and take the hose to the bottle that we made and just push it on. Now, I got just slightly too small, which is kind of what you want so it stays on. I mean, that is on there. And there you go, that is your bleeder. Also, check out the super awesome coilovers that I absolutely love and make the vehicle feel so much freaking better. So besides that, here's your bleeder. Now, I am gonna have, oh, there we go. Yep, yep, that's, that's wedged up there. Good, cool. Let's move all this stuff out of the way real quick. Now that you have your new bleeder that you just made, Put up to the caliper what you now need to go ahead and do is locate your uh brake reservoir which is right here for me it's in a really awkward spot but you want to go ahead and take your turkey baster stick it in there and suck out as much fluid as you can do not put the fluid all over the ground that's what i have this guy for this is my container it used to be for windshield wiper fluid i'm going to go ahead and pop the top on this and i'm going to get out as much fluid as i can out of the brake reservoir and put it in here. One thing that you should also keep in mind is try your hardest to not get this stuff everywhere because it is super freaking corrosive and it will rust pretty much anything. I mean, this is some really, really nasty stuff. And you're just going to continue to do this a few times until you got it. Like I said, try your hardest not to get this stuff anywhere at all because it is very corrosive. Once you go ahead and you get some of the fluid out of the reservoir and you put some of the new stuff in that's on top, go ahead and take your wrench and open up the bleeder. Uh, another thing too is as you sit there and pump the brakes to bleed the system and get all the air out, What's going to happen is the fluid level is going to go down and you need to be topping it off throughout this entire process. So let's go ahead and open up our bleeder. I have my bleeder cracked and you can see I got three air bubbles out of it. And just look at how dirty it is. I mean, I don't know if you guys could see it, but I could actually see stuff in there. And I see tiny, tiny little air bubbles coming out. So to me, like that tells me that it is not good that there's definitely air of the line and it needs to be flushed out bad. So that's why we're doing this today. Now I'm gonna go ahead and figure out a way at how I can like tie this bottle up somehow because you wanna keep this line up because that's what's gonna make it able to go ahead and bleed the system and ensure that there's no air in it. Uh, what I would be doing is I would be pumping the brakes and while I pump the brakes, I'll be squeezing all this fluid out until it starts to become clear. My bottle will catch it. And then this angle right here will ensure that there is no air that goes into the system whenever I go to tighten it all up. Which, you know, makes sense. Actually, you can already see it because gravity is just doing all the work right now. It's already cleared up quite a good bit so far. Okay, so let's go ahead, step into our vehicle. Give the brake pedal a few presses. All right, now let's go ahead and check it. All right, as you can see, all the brake fluid is coming out. Look at how gross that stuff is. Uh, let's go ahead and check our reservoir. We still have a good bit of fluid in there, so we are just going to go ahead and keep on going at it until we get all the bad fluid out. Okay, so that is pretty much all the stuff that you need to go ahead and do the entire brake flush and uh, bleed the brakes. Now on some vehicles, you will have to go ahead and get out a uh, computer for this one. It would be the VATCOM system so that I could go ahead and bleed the ABS system, which helped a little bit. That's some vehicles, some vehicles you don't. I know on my Dodge and on my Nissan, that is not necessary at all. You could do it the old school way. Uh, but like I said, that is how you go ahead and uh, flush out your brakes and bleed your brakes for $15. Uh, well, for under $15.
Now the back one actually had a good bit of air in it, so that was the issue what was going on. Uh, the brakes feel a lot better now. I'll know more tonight whenever they get nice and hot to see if I have brake fade. Uh, now, just like I showed you guys on the front tire on how to do it, you would do that tire to tire to tire until it is done. Now, that's all I'm going to be doing today. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to go ahead and hopefully wash the Nissan. But the Nissan is currently broke yet again. I have two sensors that are out. The air fuel ratio sensor, which I have reset the computer and it came back. And the other one is my uh, exhaust cab position sensor. So I have to go ahead and replace that. Uh, tomorrow I'll go ahead and go over on why you should go ahead and stick with OEM sensors instead of going with the aftermarket ones. So that is going to be it for today's video. If you found this educational or you just liked it, please go ahead and give this a big thumbs up. If you are stopping by for the first time, please hit that big red subscribe button and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I go ahead and put up new videos. And I hope that everybody's having a great day.